Good morning, gardening friends. I'm back. This is Lark, and I'm in Wisconsin, Zone 5, for Tea Time Tuesday. Beautiful fall garden. The annuals uh, are marigolds and Victoria Selvia. And the Victoria Selvia can be a come again. And I will plant more of it next year. I like that intense blue. The marigolds, the most work they take is deadheading, snapping off the spent blooms. This isn't spent, but I did them already every two days about if I want them to bloom till a frost. Cat mint is starting to rebloom. That's behind the Russian sage. And then the Russian sage is looking good. And the Mexican sunflower. Nothing much has changed, but things are progressing into autumn. And the bees are loving the sedums. It's early, so there's not a lot of bees out, but the honeybees are loaded. The bumblebees like it too, but the honeybees really are flocking around this now. So this time of the year in Wisconsin, we're looking forward to fall color. Potentellas are done. A bloom here or there. But the main feature now in this front garden are the marigolds and the sedums and the salvia. So everybody gets their turn to shine. Spireas, done flowering. But they will be turning a pretty orange very soon. A burnt orange. Before we go this way, I have to show you the arch with the sweet autumn clematis on it. Now this sweet autumn was cut down to the ground because he made my arbor taller in spring. So we had to cut it down. It is so pretty. And of course the bees really like that. Marigold again in a tiny basket on this bike. Really doing well. Even a little of the lobelia is still blooming. I put in a corridalis. We'll see if it winters and comes back next year. So this is what I do. I find a yucky bloom. See? And snap it off. Snap it off. And then I just drop it on the bottom. Another one, snap it off. And what that does is promote the plant to put out more blooms. And a nice fragrance on this sweet autumn. Which way shall we go? Let's go perennial garden. Oh, wait, back up, Lark. Pretty wild aster. Now, there's not much blooming right now in this area. The Gloriosa daisies are done and some are coming again. So the white, little white aster is the color in this area. And it duplicates the white up on top there. Great blue lobelia, I have some in here. I wanted blue, but it already bloomed. So I'm gonna let this reseed and chop some of it back until the 4th of July, and then it'll bloom later, like now. Cutting back for later bloom. You know, I had a hyacinth bean vine breeze seed, and I, I see it's blooming now. I had hyacinth bean on there last year. Isn't that pretty? 
we've been having beautiful, beautiful weather, 70s, low 80s, but no rain for weeks, weeks and weeks. I bet a month. Morning glory finally bloomed, finally. Late morning and it's done blooming. Potent patellas back here are still blooming a little bit. Containers, again the marigolds are giving me color and sweet alyssum, which I really chopped back and it's starting to rebloom. Cannas look yucky. Wind, a lot of wind damage. Wind and drying out. Yep, I'm showing you the yucky, except for the sweet alyssum and the miracles, adding a little color. Now, I don't know if any of you remember me cutting back my jade plant. I mean, there wasn't a leaf on here, I don't think. Well, here it comes. Here it comes. 40, let's see, 43 years old, this jade is. Maybe a little older, 44. And I cut it back severely and put it outside for the summer and it's doing well. In fact, these are a lot of the uh, leaves that fell and I baby plant, so I'm gonna have to be giving them away. Doing good. Can you see the little buds coming right here? Even here. And up here in for a shock in about a few weeks it's going to be coming inside the back of the shed oh I'm gonna go with more lantana next year it's so drought tolerant and the sweet potato vine burns it gets this intense Sun here so maybe I'll use for a vine a Swedish ivy it gets really hot here and lantana does good Canna's got huge, but this time of the year they're not pretty. This time of the year in the perennial garden, you want to have some autumn color. And the obedient plant, this is Miss Manners, is a nice one for late color. And the garlic chives. This will be cut back very soon because you see the, the seeds on here. I don't dare let them even get dried up. It'll just be cut back. And the branch coneflower, same thing. This I'll chop and drop and drop it back there, farther back of the garden behind the hydrangeas. Late color. Hot lips, turtle head. Now, that's blooming first. This here, I cut back. And it's going to bloom in a couple weeks. So that's what I call cutting back a perennial. By the 4th of July, or around then, I cut back uh, late summer perennials. Flocks I'll cut back, sedums, turtle head, uh, obedient plant and it'll get me later color another one of those asters and I'm dropping the seeds around so I can have some more white fireworks goldenrod is going into bloom now that's a traveler if you like that it does spread by runner but I have the area for it, so it can run. And so is uh, Euphorbia chocolate, kind of a whitish flower. Earlier in the season, check some of the earlier videos, you'll see that it has more of a dark leaf. As the heat progresses, it gets greener. Another sweet autumn. 
this definitely gets chopped down to the ground. And one hibiscus still blooming. Gloriosas. I should be in here. This is the first year I ever let the flax go to seed like that. Verbena. Buenos Aires. If I'm saying it wrong, sorry. Aster Purple Dome. The variegated sedum gets a white flower, more of a white or a light pink. Guess what, guys? Every video I showed you fleabane blooming. It is not blooming anymore. Not here. I got another place that's still blooming. Fleabane. It's done, and it, I let it reseed. Amaranth. Color, foliage color. Pretty grasses. Bees work in a purple aster or a lilac aster. Another aster is hot pink called Elma Pachki. Pretty one. I had a lot of it, but I think other things are choking it out. So what I will do is get in there and put some newspaper or cardboard down around it and choke out whatever plant is invading it and let it uh, spread for next year. It gets about four foot tall. Oh, let's show you the flea bane. What would be a video? of Tea Time Tuesday without Fleabane. Still blooming. <laughs> Some of you are saying, okay, all right already, Lark. Done with the Fleabane. Nadia. If I was persistent about deadheading it, it would be fuller bloom. It still is blooming, but it's be in fuller bloom. Fleabane gone to seed. Hasta's drying up. S'more. Fireworks goldenrod with the joe pie and the color leaves of the smoke bush. Some more Alma Pachki back there. You see, the sedum does pretty good even in part shade. And then it looks pretty with the Alma Pachki aster. And the bunnies might trim it for you and it'll bloom shorter. Otherwise, it gets about four foot. Okay, Lance Corporal Persicaria. I told you this is a good example of the insignificant flower, but let's see if I can pick that up. Oh yeah, it's picking it up, I think. The hot pink. Let's see, the hot pink. Okay. But it's the foliage. Backlit, the pink shows up a little more. Persicaria, Lance Corporal. Some more turtle head, ladies mantle. Okay. Yes, I let regular goldenrod come up too. Pretty aster, 
just giving me a little color. A lot of brown and dying back, but some of the fall asters are looking good. Now, because I haven't cut back or deadheaded all the uh, perennials that have bloomed and are done, it helps hold up the asters that can be, oh, kind of wispy, especially the wild. They can get tall and then they fall over with the wind, but with me not cutting the perennials down that are done blooming, it helps support the late blooming perennials. A oh, little bit more, what is this, uh, Rose Campion. Very little, great blue lobelia. Some flocks I cut back, just because it was too tall earlier in the season. And now it's blooming again for me. More turtle head in there, grasses, asters. The bees are really, oh, this is um, variegated Heliopsis. The grasses kind of shine this time of the year because of the dew in the morning or a slight frost. They sparkle. And then more asters. Another flux that I cut back by the 4th of July. Feverfew. And Gallardia, one of these small ones, which if I would have been good about cutting them back and deadheading them, they'd keep blooming, okay? Now, I haven't been in the garden that much, and you hear me weekly that I don't spend so much time in the garden. So what do I do? I take on a new project. And I'm going to make time for this one. Birthday present to me was watercolor classes. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Learning how to watercolor, or reintroduce me to watercolor. And the big learning experience I will have is learning not to be controlling. The garden has taught me that and now hopefully the watercolor class will teach me. Lark, be patient and just have fun. Another sweet autumn. That's on the big arch where uh, early in spring the climbing hydrangea was and the trumpet vine. The milkweed is turning such a pretty yellow, isn't it? Elma with an albino spider on it. See the size of my hand? It's got a nice size flower. That's the hibiscus from my late aunt that I started from seed. That's the go crazy grass. That's why it's in the back there. And it's also edged out with galvanized metal. Some of it jumped the galvanized metal and I need to uh, kill it. This has been challenging this last month or so. I had to keep this watered. These are the new plants that I put in here. So next year it looks pretty. My hyacinth bean vine. Such pretty flowers, aren't they? And we get our meal. Diablo, nine bark. The fall garden.
winding down. So wish me luck with my watercolor classes. Hydrangea, Annabelle, new planting, last fall. Fall aster, my fall peas. Lots of peppers. But here in Wisconsin, our nights are down hmm, 40s. Low 40s for a while. Now I think it's been about 50. I think last night was 60. Oh, cherry bomb is starting to turn, I see. I've been waiting for that. I want to see if it's hot. The ones we bought were not hot. And then I took the seeds from them, so we'll see. I don't know if I'll cover these if we get a frost warning. That's more work. Holy basil. I'm still harvesting it, drying it. Green peppers, red, green, red green bell peppers, red bell, and yellow bell in there. Calendula, I keep harvesting for my oil infusions and for drying. Starting really to mulch heavy on the garden for autumn. Still have cabbage butterflies that are eating my kale. Sometimes I get out here and I pick the worms and sometimes I don't. I still chop up the leaves with holes in when I uh, stir fry them. Cucumbers are doing okay yet. Just okay. They're giving me cucumbers so it's a good thing. Borage going to uh, seed quite a bit so I'm going to have a lot of borage next year. Whoa! <laughs> Do you see this? Look, look at this cucumber. It grew through the uh, chicken wire. I guess I missed that one. Got to pick. Got to pick, pick, pick. Donate. I'm not going to get too much out of this anymore, I don't think. Vortex beans. Those are the ones that the woodchuck got, and they're blooming later. That's okay. I get more... I get more um, beans later in the season. Oh, I have to pick. I think that one's a Carmen. Yep. It's very hard for me to see the screen with the sunshine. More amaranth. There I have it over here in the garden because we eat the leaves too. Still getting some cherries and some, uh, oh, I think these are, mm, better boy, doesn't matter. I still getting tomatoes. You know, I cooked down all my cherry tomatoes. I, I had a bucket full and I put them in the little Nesco and cooked them down and then used the emulsion blender on them. And it turned out good. And good enough for sauce. Raspberries. Lots of raspberries this year. I usually pick early evening. And I have enough to freeze this year. Mm. Really loaded. This method of uh, using coated rope is working out fine. And then I take a spring clothespin and I clothespin it to the um, rope in some places. Makes it easier to pick. And I don't break so many branches because they're really heavy. More amaranth. I do have to water my asparagus. I was, it's in here, in amongst the calendula and the comfrey. 
And I do have a soaker in there, so I'm going to hook that up. And more uh, Scarlet Runners, which I have enough frozen now, so I'm letting some go to seed. So gardening, friends, that's Tea Time Tuesday. Still harvesting crops. And still looking at a pretty garden. And it's still a lot of work. PG hydrangea. So for you who want to start a perennial garden, think twice about making it so big. Unless you're going to have like a prairie garden. It is work. But at least with perennials, you don't have to plant every year. This I plant, and this is one of the few places I do planting every spring. But there are perennials in here too. So early in the season, I don't have to plant. These uh, alyssum basket of gold come back every year, as do the corabels. So I have color before I even put out the marigolds for summer color. And then, of course, the sedums come up, too. So take care, my gardening friends. I'm not sure if I will be doing this weekly. I haven't been, and there just wasn't anything interesting to see. Take care, and thank you for visiting.